Working Jake here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, and we're here in the desert of Western Utah, and we are about to go camping in an underground lava tube. We're gonna see a whole bunch of cool stuff. Are you excited, Jacob? Yeah! yeah! All right, let's do it. Go check out some lava tubes. Yeah. Why don't you put on your backpack here, okay? We're out in the middle of nowhere, so I'm gonna turn on my Garmin InReach Mini so Becca can track our location and I can call for help if I need. Look at this place. Look at that. That's crazy. You see another lava tube? Now don't get too close to the edge, okay? Yeah. Hey look Jake, there's a big lava tube over there. Let's go check out that one. Yeah, that's a huge lava tube. That one makes a cave in here. The edge can break and fall down. Follow me, Jay. Yeah, look, there's another lava tube right there. Okay, bud. Oh, dear. Look at this. Uh, this is so cool. There's miles and miles of these lava caves here. And uh, some of them are pretty collapsed and others are pretty stable. And I want to camp inside the lava tube. Not only is it really cool, but the wind is howling up on top of the plateau. So I really would like to be sheltered. But I don't want to sleep somewhere where there's big boulders falling off the ceiling. So we're gonna try to find a cave that doesn't have a lot of cave-ins. Should we try another spot? Yeah. All right, let's go back up. Well, me and Jake don't have a lot of time to explore tonight because it's already 7 p.m. We drove for three hours on those dirt roads to get here. This place is not not easy to access. So we're gonna kind of find our campsite, make camp, and then tomorrow we'll have all the time in the world to explore the lava tubes and some sand dunes, some cool rock formations, and even some historical sites nearby. Look at this. Sun's starting to get low. We gotta find our campsite quick. Can you look up this guy mofo? Oh, get that aside. There you go, bud. This one's not terrible, but there is still a lot of debris knocked down down there. Let's try another one, Jay.
Think this is perfect, Jacob. You notice how there's lots of rocks in here. This part caves in a fair amount. See over here, there's not really any rocks in the middle there. So the odds of getting crushed by a rock are a lot less. Uh, uh, oh. All right, let's go ahead and explore a little bit. Well, this ceiling looks pretty solid up here. And you can see there's no rocks on the ground, so nothing's fallen off the ceiling in a very, very long time. So I think this is where we're going to make camp. All right, let's... Uh... All right. I got some really awesome lightweight camping gear that I'm eager to try out for the first time today. It's going to be an interesting test run. You know, the great thing about sleeping in a lava tube is you don't have to worry about staking down your tent. Heck, the only reason why we're using a tent here is so that we don't have any scorpions or snakes or mosquitoes biting us in the middle of the night. I'm seeing one and I'm going to it right in the house. Oh, you Alright guys, let me show you some of the gear I've got. I've got this Nemo inflatable pillow. It's made out of fabric instead of rubber and it just feels really good, especially if you don't inflate it all the way. I even got a little one for Jacob. I've got the Sea to Summit ultra light inflatable mattress. I've been using this a lot and I really like this thing. It is comfortable. And it comes with this little inflator pouch that you use as a pump to inflate it. It's about three times faster than just using your breath. Why don't you go and sit on this mat here? Can you even use my pillow? Now, hands down, the lightest air mattress on the market is the Thermarest Neo Air Uber Light. This is an entire air mat, but they make kid size ones, which is really nice. So this is gonna be Jacob's. You can blow it up by mouth, which isn't a lot for the kid size one, or they have this inflator sack you can use. One of the new products I'm excited to try are these down camping quilts from Enlightened Equipment. So you go and you slide your air mattress inside the camping quilt, and it's got these little clips, and there you go. So basically you have a down comforter that's attached to your camping mattress, just like that. The logic behind these is that they're lighter and smaller than a sleeping bag. They're also more versatile, so in hot weather, they're really nice because you can use them just like a straight blanket. People who find sleeping bags claustrophobic or they toss and turn a lot and they get bound up in their sleeping bag, they tend to like camping quilts better. But uh, I'm gonna give it a try, and this is my, gonna be my first time sleeping in a camping quilt. And that is not a song wacky as always. Got our beds all set up. Shall we get some dinner? Are you hungry? Yeah. All right, I bet you are. <sighs> Hands down, the lightest, smallest stoves on the market are these little isobutane stoves. I mean, they only weigh a few ounces. They cost less than 50 bucks, and uh, they're just so easy. This one's got a little barbecue lighter clicker thing on it. We're gonna see if it works. Whoa, Whoa that works like a charm. Oh, that feels yeah. Yeah. That looks like that's boiling. You want beef stew? Or do you want lasagna? Lasagna. Of course you want lasagna. All right, we're eating lasagna with meat sauce tonight. Okay, we'll just seal that up. What? Why you pick that? Does that taste good, bud? Yeah, you're eating some lasagna. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ooh, that's... That one was hot. Hey, Jake, you, would you like a roasted marshmallow? So, yo. There you go. You like your marshmallow? Oh, there's a mouse. There's a mouse running around the bottom of the lava tube. Now I'm glad we have the tent. Oh, there he is. Yes, he's right there. He just ran up. 
All right, bud, let's get ready for bed, okay? Duncan, see another mouse. Okay, okay, okay. Slide on down, buddy. Yo, is that cozy? Yeah. Well, other than all the little creature noises, we had a good night's sleep. Uh, woke up a couple times because I could hear a mouse chewing on a log and the bats would come in and make their little squeaking noise and they'd be flapping right above the tent. And at one point there was something a little bit larger that came in and smelled us and then took off, but uh, nothing really messed with us. So it wasn't bad. It was just kind of wake up. Man, what was that? <laughs> but it sure was nice to get out of that wind last night. Man, it was absolutely roaring out here. Well, I'm gonna let Jake sleep in as much as he can because that boy needs his rest. But as soon as he's up, we're gonna eat a quick breakfast. And uh, then we're gonna go and check out some really cool stuff. There's some sand dunes and dried lake beds and some cool rock features and even some historical sites nearby. We got a full day of exploring the desert before we can go back home. Morning, Jacob. <laughs> I'll tell you what, after one night of using this sleeping quilt, I really like it. It's uh, really comfy and it's very lightweight, very compact, so it doesn't take up much room in my backpack. So I, I might be using this thing a lot more in the summertime. Got some blueberry granola with milk. Excited for some breakfast? Here you go, bud. Nom, 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 nom. Water out. This backpack I'm using is from Gossamer Gear, and it's one of the best ultralight backpacks on the market. It's just so comfortable and just weighs nothing. Most of the gear here is kind of expensive ultralight backpacking equipment. Now, normally you don't need stuff this expensive and this light if you're just hiking by yourself. Uh, but when you're hiking with little kids and you're carrying multiple sleeping bags and you need like a three-man tent and all that stuff, suddenly having ultralight stuff becomes really important. So since my boys have started to get into hiking, I've become more of a connoisseur of high-end backpacking equipment. All packed up, I think this weighs about 14, 15 pounds. Yeah. Would you like... All right, let's just check to make sure we didn't leave anything behind. Good, looks clean. All right, shall we go back to the car? This is why you need that light backpack. Cause I got 34 pounds of Jake to carry too. Oh. You now need to fall down. Oh. 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 You all buckled in, bud? Yep. Good, and see we got your camel pack set up on your car seat so you can drink whenever you want. Nice. We got a couple hours of serious 4 by 4 to do. There's just miles and miles of these lava tube formations. I mean, more than you could ever explore. Just look at them. We could hike for days out here and never see all of them. boys Tommy and Nathan they're in school still so that's why it's just me and Jacob camping out today my boys are stuck at home doing online school but uh, school's gonna be out here in a week or two and then we're gonna have the whole crew exploring and camping and doing adventures with us Guys, this summer is going to be so amazing. We've got some great trips and amazing videos planned for you guys. 
We're gonna be traveling and filming in 16 different states. We're gonna be climbing mountains, floating rivers. We've got some incredible road trips. We're gonna be noodling catfish. It's just, it's gonna be awesome. If you follow us on Facebook, we post a link every time I post a new video, which is every Saturday morning. Every once in a while, I'm seeing these horn-toed lizards running across the road. I'm really trying to keep a sharp eye out. I want to catch one. <laughs> you like, I want one. <laughs> this whole desert we've been exploring is part of an ancient lake called Lake Bonneville. And it used to be the size of about Lake Michigan. And right up there, that hill, that hill is an old volcano, and that's what caused the lava tubes. About 15,000 years ago, it exploded. Some pretty cool geology here in Utah. Look what I just found. It's a mule deer antler. Oh. A nice one too. I'm a deer. You're a deer. Hey, I'm gonna walk up here for just a second. This is pretty cool, but I wanna be careful with my father-in-law's car. So I think I'm gonna walk up this hill and check it out first before I try it. Well, it's not too bad. I think we can do it without being rough on the car. Oh, look at this. What a beautiful place. Just saw this little rock formation, decided to go up and check it out. I'm so glad I did. All right, let's keep moving. Hey, look, a little cottontail rabbit. See? See right there? See that bunny? This is really fun, but it can get sketchy quick. If you break down out here, you could die of heat stroke. We haven't seen another car in 24 hours. Uh, additionally, if it rains out here, all of these trails will turn into mud holes immediately, and then you'll get stuck out here. Luckily, we've got a bunch of water and emergency communication devices, and there's no rain forecast for the next few days. So we're in pretty good shape. Jacob, come check this out. But right up there, there's a big pile of sticks. That's the nest of a golden eagle right there. See, look at that. It's a little jawbone of some animal that the eagle ate. Got the bones of little birds and mice and stuff from the leftovers from the eagle's nest. And look, it's like the rock is just melting and dripping down the cliff. Tell you what, that was pretty cool. Look at that. Hey Jacob, look what we got ahead. We got a dry lake. <laughs> I speak sheep! See, we just drove over a, what's called a cattle guard. The gaps between the metal bars are wide enough that a cow's foot will slip down in it, so the cows don't want to walk on it, but you can drive a car over it. It's a way to keep cattle penned in, but let cars through. That's 
that's the first car we've seen in 24 hours. Guys, this is the Topaz Mountain Japanese concentration camp from World War II. On this location, thousands of Japanese Americans from the West Coast were taken from their homes and relocated to the desert here in Utah and forced to live under guard and barbed wire for the duration of World War II. This is where the internment camp hospital was. You can see kind of the old roads, and it's all set out in the grid pattern. This thing was the size of a small town. <laughs> Japanese spies and saboteurs had helped the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor. And so when World War II started, the U.S. was afraid that the Japanese spies would do the same thing on the West Coast. So all Japanese people, whether they were Americans or not, were rounded up and removed from the west coast and forced into settlement camps like this one here, out in the middle of nowhere. As far as your eye can see, it's old abandoned roads and broken foundations. Lots of people. Oh, See this whole entire camp? We just explored this little tiny bit of it. We need to get headed home. So I'm gonna call it for today and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. And if you guys wanna see more adventures from our Utah trip, I'll put a link down in the video description below as soon as that video posts. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.